Hello everyone, welcome back to Frank Film Club. This week we are talking about The Iron Claw, which was written and directed by Sean Durkin. Um, I'm going to give you a log line. Yeah. So this is the true story of the inseparable Von Erich brothers who made history in an intensely competitive world of, of professional wrestling in the early 1980s. Mm. The film stars Zac Efron, Jeremy Allen White, Harris Dickinson, Lily James, and Stanley Simons. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the truth behind the story. Um, so talking about the Von Erich family in real life. Um, going to talk a little bit about the making of the film, um, the absence of nominations for this film, and also um, the fact that it was produced by A24. And we'll dive into that a little bit. Um, so first of all, how are you both? Good, yeah. So happy to be back recording with you both. It's been a wonderful week. Um, what have I been doing? Well, I bought myself a new cardigan <laughs> in the kids section at Next. Gorgeous. Um, that was fun. A um, lot cheaper than the adult So section. much cheaper. Yeah. Also, kids' shoes, they go up to like size three, four, five. Like kids. Ah, what size fit are you? Three. Are you so, size three? Yeah. <laughs> well, is that all right? <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> but like you think of all the really fun styles of kids shoes. Yeah. You can get them. Like, oh, well, I can. I'm out of the equation, size yeah. six. Oh, Me too. That's yeah. great. It is. I love it. It's like great fun, but I, yeah, sometimes I like get quite possessive over pieces and I see a little girl beelining for a cardigan. <laughs> I think you should be so lucky. <laughs> Push That's her out of the way. I'm yeah. much yeah. faster. Yeah. Respect your elders in the kids section, please. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's been a nice week. Nice, spending your time at Next. Yeah, love Gorgeous. Next. <laughs> what about you, Han? Yeah, good. Um, Daisy has been being really loud. <gasps> she started verbalizing a lot. I think she's trying to talk. I think she might be a genius, <laughs> but she's basically just screaming. <laughs> but because that's all she can do. But I showed Larry a video earlier. I showed you in a sec. But it was um, she's uh, she's just nonstop screaming um, but not in pain nor frustration she's just excited and happy it's so cute it it's is very cute. her little personality starting to come through and it's like just so lovely no um so it's been a really nice week that sounds amazing baby daisy, baby yeah. daisy. she's gorgeous how's you <laughs> um i'm good yeah <clears throat> things that wrapped have been a bit mental yes um yeah it's all been a bit crazy and but in a really good way yeah so yeah Hopefully by the end of this series, we can announce what is going yeah. on. Yeah, that's true. Say. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. But we've got great news. So that's yeah. fine. But it has meant that work's been like busy, busy, busy. Rather crazy. Yeah. Um, but really nice. Yeah. So yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> Let's jump in. Let's. <laughs> Let's. So what were your first thoughts of The Iron Claw? I was so excited to watch this movie. I think since I saw that picture of the four of them with their mullets, like it was a, a like publicity photo release, like a first look or whatever, a couple of years yeah. ago or something. I just thought it was such a revelation having these four on camera together playing brothers. And I was just so intrigued. I, I had no idea about this family. I had no idea what the story was gonna be. I didn't even really know it was gonna be about wrestling. Like I really truly had no idea. Um, but I just, I was excited to see Zac Efron do something which I outwardly perceived to be like a cool, great movie. I think he deserves it. And then it was really like the whole time I was like just learning and discovering a lot. And then by the end, I do feel, I f did feel like slightly, I don't know, maybe just disappointed in like my experience of the movie. Um, that's not to say I didn't enjoy it, but I just think that I had maybe an idea in my head that was not what I should have been expecting. Maybe I should have watched the trailer and I should have, you know, been a little bit more involved in, yeah, knowing what the subject matter was going to be. Um, but yeah, we can get into all of that. And I'm, I'm really intrigued to hear what you both thought as well. Mm. You loved it, right? Han? I, I loved it. Um, I like films of this uh, it's films that like show um, like the shattered masculinity and this is like so that. Yeah. Um, I, I came into the film thinking that I was going to love it and I think it it lived up to that. I, I wouldn't say that it exceeded. I, I think that it was um, brilliant, but it wasn't like 
as incredible maybe as it could have been and I think probably for a lot of the reasons why you might think but we can maybe yeah yeah, yeah. um but um I I loved it I really loved it mm -hmm. so I'm interested and we might have to wrestle <coughs> to like find the answer and whether or not it's a great film yeah how did you feel I was really similar to Maze for exactly the same reasons as you just said like I think in my head I had come up with um I'd been advert. I think I'd only seen some pictures. I knew it was about wrestling, but I didn't know it was going to be about tragedy in any way. Yeah. I think in my head, it was going to be this really fun film. Right. And it was fun at times, but it was not, it was completely not like it's a I, harrowing yeah, story. It was, it was totally har harrowing. Yeah. So I finished it and was just a bit like, oh, that was just a bit awful, which is meant to be. Um, mm. But it just wasn't what I'd kind of like wanted out of it. I found it entertaining though. Yeah. Mm. So, and I think it was just, I got the wrong end of the stick. Yeah. There. Yeah. I think that's so interesting. Um, yeah. Just like how you go into a movie really, and then it being a different genre kind of to yeah. what you were expecting. Like maybe that's not a fair reason to like not enjoy it. Maybe I need to go and look at it again. But um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I felt like it was going to be a little bit sillier. We had this conversation the other day. So we, we met with um, Letterboxd. And we were talking about watching the trail, like if people watch trailers or if they don't watch trailers. And I don't really watch trailers anymore because I think that there's like a style to trailers that sometimes doesn't fit what the actual movie's like. And I don't want to go in with any preconceptions. I want to like really enjoy the story. Yeah. And we we spoke about this on Salt Saltburn as well, you know, like the fanfare online and how mm. that like colors your viewing experience. So I felt that with Iron Claw, definitely. But I think that's what I also really loved about it is that mm. there was so much behind these glossy characters and this amazing ensemble cast and that there was a true story, which I didn't know. And I'm so excited to know what is true and what is not and what the, what is creative license and what is autobiographical. Yeah. Well, do you want to jump straight into that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. So yeah, it's based on a true story. I also didn't know anything about this family beforehand, but they they were, well, they are extremely famous. Um, and all of the deaths in the film are true. Um, in fact, there was a sixth brother. So we there's only five brothers like included in the film. Um, Kevin is the only one who survives, but there was an, another brother who also died by suicide. Oh my God. Yeah, it's awful. Was he a wrestler as well, do you know? So he was, I think he also must have done wrestling, but he had, was it? He had asthma and brittle bone syndrome. So it oh. made him really difficult to do well mm. in wrestling, obviously. Um, and so he, he died by suicide at age Why? 21. And then Sean Durkin, the, the director of the film, writer and director of the film, he well, he ended up having to remove that from the film because he just felt like the film couldn't like. How can you add another yeah. death in there? Which is mad. It's already it's, like yeah, really yeah, because it, it's kind of one that I guess it is like you can't you can't write it. it I feel like if you'd written this film as an uh, entirely fictional, yeah, you'd read it and be like, come on, <laughs> that's so stupid, mm. that wouldn't happen. But it's like the fact that they had to cut out a death to make it, yeah, like an, a true death to make it more palatable. Oh, it's just insane is the dad still alive no don't think so kevin okay. is okay um i just it's just heartbreaking that all of these things happen because really of his um power over the family yeah yeah this was something that was like very nuanced in the movie in my opinion and I feel like I could have benefited from knowing whether or not we wanted the father to be like the main antagonist in the movie or is it okay that it's just nuanced like that because it is a real story and it's not so black and white. But I just, I feel like these kids are putting themselves under so much pressure and are we supposed to feel like they've been manipulated to be that way or, you know, is it just something that they've, put on themselves and yeah I just I think in terms of like driving the story and at the end of the day this is a film which is like a fictionalized retelling of something that's true but yeah I just I felt like I could have benefited from but that's interesting too to like for yeah it to be layered like that yeah I I I say that's something that I probably liked about it is that 
yeah, he was, I'd say he was definitely the antagonist and I like that it wasn't too black and white because then that might, well, it's, then it's not nuanced. And also that's not what it is to be like, would you think like, m- you know, my mother, for instance, I wouldn't call her my life's antagonist. Like there's, there's things about, there's things in every family where it's conflicted feelings and it's like very complicated and maybe that's why it's not like spelled out in that way although however I was just thinking is there a scene where they face that and um he gets told you know what he's done to the family well yeah sort of only really at the very end after Kerry shoots himself Mm -hmm. yeah and then you see yeah Zac Efron like you know at that moment and yeah, I felt like I guess it was sort of building to that point. Um, did you want more? So I guess my, my, did you guys cry at the end? Yeah. No, but I felt very, very sad. Yeah, I see what was missing to, like, pay, like pace wise for me or just like rhythm wise was that at the end I could, connect with the fact that it was very very emotional and I thought the performances were so wonderful and even the moment where you see the three brothers on the dock in like a heaven sort of whatever Mm. I thought it was all amazing and I just I like (laughs) just really wanted to be able to cry and I just felt actually like not very sad but maybe that's a me problem no you know what maybe I also I think I might have also felt that like I felt very very sad but like I say I didn't cry and I felt like I was supposed to be yeah you know what I mean yeah like I didn't like after all that and yeah. I'm just trying to interrogate why yeah. like I didn't get there but one but thing you did. I, I so. did but I also think that maybe I really wanted to mm. because there was a few moments in there where I was thinking oh, I wish that they had spent more time on that to really make us feel the emotional gut punch that it's meant to be, like when David dies in Japan and it, it, it just happened so quickly. Yeah, you uh, know that was like a real moment where I audibly gasped in the cinema, like, <gasps> you know, and then and then I really felt like we were gonna go on to the sort of journey of it and then it, it sort of tailed off for me, mm. really sadly. And maybe that's what it is, like you were saying, the, the rhythm of the tragedies happening, they there but because there's so many things that happen it's like how can you possibly give those things time you really have to do because it's a two two hours 15 or something which is like great length but it's like you know in that you're just it, you're just really storytelling with no space for god there's so much isn't development there? and like you know nuanced relationships within the family like you really just see them come back together fight you know it's kind of just the next thing next thing next thing So the actual, the the film, um, what did you think of the performances seeing Zac Efron in this kind of character, in this kind of film? Yeah, I I didn't know that he was going to be leading the movie and I was so excited because I do think he's a really amazing actor and I think that he's like been part of like lots of movies that haven't done so well and it's just like not a reflection of him. So... I was thrilled. I thought he really shone. I mean, he gave everything to this role. I, again, another audible gasp, just even when he gets out of bed, the first shot, I was just like, how has, like, he doesn't even look human, like, how much he worked out for this role. Like, it's, the body transformation is just, like, unbelievable. Like, there's people who do that for a living who don't look like that. You know what I mean? Like, he really went there and I just think that any kind of dedication for to a a role like that is just like unbelievable um because you're like putting all of that pressure on yourself and then you've got to go and do your job each day and you've got all this other yeah this whole other regime and lifestyle happening when you're also filming which is just like mental so yeah I thought he really shone I thought that he was like really good casting for that character because he doesn't seem like someone who would be super jealous of his brothers or like he's just so supportive isn't he he seems like a guy yeah he just like he fit into that role really well for me Mm. yeah yeah Yeah. um interestingly on the like body transformation thing there wasn't um there wasn't like a strict 
plan for anybody to do any kind of transformation. It was just kind of like they do what they want to do in prep for like body wise, fitness wise for their characters, which I thought was quite cool. Um, I'm maybe this is maybe this is a little bit shady, but I'm wondering if Zac Efron was able to get to that body shape compared to someone like Harris Dickinson or Jeremy Allen White, although Jeremy Allen White was ripped mm. uh, in a lot more so than usual because he had, he's not busy on a lot of other jobs. Yeah. And so like him in that body is quite uncastable actually in the body that he had for Iron Claw. Yeah. So if he had more space around it in order to get there and then maybe bring it down from what it is, rather than other than sorry ha harris dickinson who is going yeah. from job to job but He's it also just works like it works that Har like they've all like got different body types like, yeah I just, yeah like that's what wrestling is like as well absolutely yeah i i didn't feel like you know they like how come you didn't yeah i didn't like yeah. kind of question it it just felt like he would be built like that because he's like kind of the one that you would imagine being the star and then when he's yeah. not it's, it, that's the most like the strength point. and yeah, yeah you know like he he's like there's so much about him that would make him like be able to take over his dad's legacy and then it just still kind of falls flat even after all of that work it just it really adds to the emotional arc of his character i think him being just like unbelievably ripped yeah mm. Because they all, like Harris Dickinson, who is like the body shape is so different, but his character brings like com uh, the charisma. Yeah. And he's so amazing at that part. And then Jeremy Allen White's, like they all bring such different things. And it's like, yeah, that's what families are like. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, it worked. It really worked. Yeah. yeah. Interesting, actually, that we've just had that chat about a uh, like load of male actors' bodies. Is that like, is this okay? that we're speaking about the bodies in that way. I, I think it kind of is because it was, we're speaking, we're thinking in terms of fitness, but. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's like the mental preparation that comes with like working out like that, which also feeds into the character versus like just the aesthetics of how it looks and then how that has played into all of their characters. Mm. Um, but we are commenting on like men's bodies. Um, which is like, is that necessary at all? And mm. it's like the double standard, like, but I, I, w I would argue that we're not objectifying them. Um, I think we're more so talking about like the athleticism of embodying a role and not that if somebody hasn't trained as much that that would be bad because they were busy on other things. It's not, we're not saying that, I think it's, more just how it influences the characters yeah exactly yeah. but it's it's a good point though because yes. i w i don't think we would sit here and talk about female bodies no and we've just spoken about male bodies mm. for like a long time yeah interesting mm. yeah moving on yeah food for <laughs> thought i'll be interested to see if we get any like i'd love to hear people's comment comments on that yeah what yeah, do think? let us like, know. But what, be nice. What do you think? Yeah, we're <laughs> conflicted about yeah. what we've just said. So let us know if you're, especially if you're a, a, a man, yeah. then let yeah. us know how you feel about that conversation. Yeah, yeah. The director, Sean Durkin, he liked to, or likes to shoot a scene from top to bottom. So when they were doing... Um, the wrestling matches, would you call it a, yeah, yeah it's a yeah. match. Um, they're basically do it, they're, because they didn't, I don't think they had many stunt, if any stunt doubles, maybe they did have some. They did a lot of the wrestling themselves. That's crazy. Um, and so they're doing like full on wrestling matches, the whole, like a whole match. That's unbelievable. So I think it was big on them, um, yeah. like a big strain. And apparently, um, I saw one interview where Harris Dickinson, it's like you do when they're doing the claw and even though it's all um, stunt and he's not actually grabbing this guy's head, but you still like have to like tense your arm and make it look kind of real. And then by the end of a scene, he's like, my arm's just season up and it's ridiculous because <laughs> he's like, I'm knackered, but I haven't actually been doing anything. So I think it was like really like trying on their bodies um, yeah. because they are wrestling but not and um, yeah but wrestling is not what it seems anyway like yeah, it's, it's not real it's, yeah. it is real oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is real but it's not 
they're not like it's actually heightened. hitting you. Yeah, it's heightened. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So that's like inception, wrestleception. It's like a <laughs> fight within a fight. There's not a real fight within a real <laughs> fight. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. Wow. Yeah, truly. I think that that's like such a dream as an actor. Did, have they spoken about it? Like they loved it. They had a good time. Yeah. 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 It seems to all like very fond memories. And yeah. Like, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure they, it was mainly them. There was definitely like when they're well, yeah. jumping off I was the thinking sides, that. Yeah, when them. you see them like body slamming, it's like very clearly not been edited mm. or yeah. like cut around. Like that's unbelievable. I wonder how they got insurance for this. Yeah, mm. interesting. I guess they have like pads on in, in some capacity just because the wrestlers do. Like they've got the big like knee shin things. Yeah. And, like, and then obviously the ground's like spongy, but... Yeah, wow. Wow. I'm pretty sure like, I <laughs> don't know if this is interesting, but like, I'm pretty sure like when you sign on to a movie, I'm pretty sure wrestling is like one of the things that you're not allowed to do like while you're employed <laughs> because it's so dangerous. Oh, like, outside of filming. Yeah, like they have things like skydiving and like, I don't know, skiing, like these kind of activities that are, are like high risk. And they, if you're insured by a company to be on set for mm. the next six months, then you won't partake in certain things like, race driving or whatever i'm pretty sure wrestling's in there so i'm just like they might have done how they got around funny. it but, they did. but i suppose like it was it is choreographed and so it is yeah. they did three weeks prep um to do the choreographing and this all all of that wow so that's how long did they shoot for do you know uh 36 days <gasps> wow yeah Which... that's a lot isn't it to get through like you think about all the yeah it's a longish film it's quite a long film. I say it's not a lot. lot of different. I wouldn't say that's a lot. No, I say it's no. That that I've, was quick. Yeah, because it's quite a long film. Quite a lot happens. Were there any real wrestlers in the film? Yes, mm. I think I think the people that they were wrestling with um, were uh, were real wrestlers, mm. and they hold up against those, which yeah. is so exciting. Yeah, I, yeah. W I wondered that. I also wondered if Holt McCallany, who plays Fritz, the dad. Mm. If he comes from what kind of sporting background he comes from, because he's always been built. Really great to see him in this role as well, which is also a bit of a Zach Efron-y thing for him in this film, I think. Because yeah. he always plays great characters, but I don't think with like this much depth and drama. Yeah. Um, if he comes from a wrestling background or if he comes from like a bodybuilding background or something, because he's, he's built and he yeah. always has been. Yeah, I don't know, mm. but yeah. And he's got like the voice. Yeah, yeah. you're right, yeah. The, yeah, he felt so real, like from his first scene, from like that, the black and white portion of the movie. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, like he does seem very much from this world. Yeah. Mm. Or just good casting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was an element, well, I think this is maybe just a me problem and it's like not, but there was an element around like the way that he delivered a lot of his lines that I felt were like emotionless or just like cold. And I'm thinking now that maybe that was an intentional part of this, but there were flows like rhythmically dialogue. You're thinking like there's four brothers and their family and they're all gonna, and the incredible mum as well. We haven't mm. even spoken about her, but you know, like my favorite thing in movies is like a dinner table scene. That's like my favorite type of scene. And when you see a family all together around a dinner table, I just think it's like such an opportunity and so many writers just like have that sort of like flow. And maybe it's good that they don't have that kind of like connection between, but there's not any moments like that in this movie. And I just felt like we were robbed of that. Mm. There was a dinner table bit. Yeah, there. with the breakfast. And the barbecue no. outside as well. Yeah, and they have uh, Lee, Lily James over. Yeah. And it's like, and there's and there's one where it's just like, I think it was just like dead silent, because, which was so telling. Yeah. But none of like, yeah. Yeah, I just think Not that like, like, understand, I wanted more of the dynamic between the brothers and then the br brothers with the dad and then the brothers with the mum. Like, I just really felt like I was missing that feeling so as I could get inside of the world mm. with them. I right. think it was a real, it could have been a choice, but I it could have been a missed opportunity potentially. Yeah. And that might be performance based. 
or it might be script based. Yeah. But it's not in there for him to do. Are we yeah. talk, we, we're talking about the dad in particular with this. Yeah, 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 mostly. I think his dynamic with them, I, I've sort of brought it up a number of times in this episode. I think it's just <clears throat> something I've got to watch again and really sort of like get into. Um, but it just, I just couldn't ever tell where I was supposed to sit. Mm. And maybe that's just my problem is that I want it to be spelled out to me. But yeah, I don't know. I just missed that yeah myself but it could have been a choice and that's fine like do your choice so so the film throughout it has like a quite a it's we're in the real world um yeah and like stick to this gorgeous style and tone but there's one part the dream sequence which i think you touched on earlier um that feels quite well it's it's definitely other world other worldly yeah, worldly. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is um which is quite otherworldly and um yeah just like it stood out for me in the film not not as something that I loved but I was just like oh this is different the afterlife bit the yeah. afterlife bit yeah yeah and I just wondered your thoughts on that yeah like loved that bit loved that bit and I agree it was like came from nowhere and I was just like why but at the same time just like I felt like maybe that's when the moment that I felt these brothers, like that love, like which you are kind of starved of. And maybe that's brilliant, you know, for it to be that moment. But, and their little brother, <laughs> who's oh. their big brother, who's like five, like, oh, this so is the thing, like it is beautiful, but I just wasn't crying, but I was going like that, you know. <laughs> was said, just, yeah. do you think that that, was maybe this is like an obvious thing to you but it, it didn't occur to me at all he said that's probably um kevin looking at his dead brother thinking that's where he is right this is also what my friend sarah said she was like is that supposed to be like what he's imagining in his head for where when he's, he's looking at exactly yeah which is beautiful. also really beautiful yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's what i think it is rather than it just being like a random, a random afterlife yeah. heaven moment <laughs> <laughs> but i do think that that was quite i don't know it, i i didn't love it but i did it but it was nice i think the the little brother not the he's the oldest brother isn't he but he's like yeah. still six yeah say? um <laughs> it kind of made me go <laughs> Like, laugh. not as in like laugh, <laughs> oh, you which is, I know, which, you can't. I know, which is awful. But no, I was I just like, it. oh, it's quite bizarre. Like this poor, he's like stuck in that. I yeah, don't know, it, that's but, actually like really grim. But it just, it just like, like I found it quite jarring in a weird way. A little, but also because Jeremy Allen White had his foot back. So I was like, what are the rules of this heaven <laughs> yeah. that we have over yeah. here? Oh. <laughs> You know, what yeah, I mean? no. like not that it's a moment about that, but the fact that my brain went there, it yeah. does mean something. I was like, how come he's a foot, got a foot back? Yeah. Like, he but is still a baby. Is the foot, oh yeah, because you see him walking outside. Yeah, Sorry. he like yeah. looks at his feet and he's like. <laughs> yeah, we're back. <laughs> we're back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just wanted to, can we clean up, Sean Durkin, can we clean up the rules of heaven, please? Yeah. <laughs> how are, are we there the way that we imagine we want to be there? Tell me. Yeah, <laughs> let us know. Apparently, this... I'm just Megan Fox in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So apparently that that scene was quite a hard sell to the like financiers, producers, sure. whoever. Um, but it was just something that Sean really wanted to include. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because he wanted to visualize the sense of their connection yeah and it'd be and like a release there we go yeah and i felt that and i that's what i wanted i was really searching for and so mm. i like the choice mm. i really do it did it for me good there was things that didn't but i like that one yeah i'm glad mm. can i ask a question mm. was with a real well kevin if he's the only surviving member of the family was he involved at all in the process of making so i don't think he was involved in the making but he has he did watch it afterwards and he really loved it oh good yeah yeah him and his sons i think went oh. to see it maybe at one of the premieres and yeah it mm. went down really well which is really nice mm. yeah but one thing that sean durkin did say that i found interesting he was like yeah he loved it uh kevin did but i 
but I wasn't making it for him. And like, he wasn't fussed, I, he wasn't gonna be fussed either way, but I know that Zac Efron was really, really pleased to hear that. Mm. So it's just interesting. So we, so Zac Efron didn't work with the real Kevin to find the character? I don't or? think so, no. Just went through source material. I think so, so. Mm. yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Um, okay, so this film did, didn't get any nominations for anything this year. It also didn't really go to any festivals. Um, it premiered late December last year, 2023. Um, so I just, yeah, wanted to discuss that. Does that surprise you? It like does in a way, because I, I do feel like there's a sort of like rhythm to a lot of these things and it, it isn't always, yeah, I feel like there's a rhythm and this film is like awards material. It's got the cast, it's a true story. It's Sean who's like had a lot of success before. You know, it's like a lot of things going for it. Um, but I feel my experience was like not like the most positive one. And so I get it. I get why it didn't like quite, because it, just because it's got the cast and because it's based on true story and because it's Sean doesn't mean that it should go to, mm. right? But but it's just, we're so used to the same names kind of popping up. But but interestingly, like none of those names have been, I think that was partly maybe why it wasn't nominated because like Harris. Sean, Zac Efron, only Harris, Harris Dickinson Jeremy. is the only one. Yeah, I mean, it's not been film stuff. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was quite, it was like, it would have been a step up. I don't know if you want to call it up. It would have been a different step for a lot of those names. Then, yeah, maybe that's it then. Yeah. Or maybe, well, probably not entirely, but partly. Maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I also think it's, it was a really, it's been a really strong year. Like there's a lot of really amazing, incredible contenders and potentially if it was another year, then maybe there would be a Best Supporting Actor or a Best Actor nomination. Um, but... It's weird they didn't do like festivals though. Yeah, yeah. so then it's such was, a festival yeah. movie. And because Where did it premiere? Or just what, like a premiere? Just, yeah, they just did a premiere. So that's what I found really interesting because it's A24 as well who have like seen what, really strategic with what they, they do. When did they come on board? Um, they produced it. So I'm guessing that- From the outset. Well, I think so. I don't know for sure. I think I think they did though. Because they, they quite often come in at the end and buy a movie. Yeah. And then market it and then it does well. Yeah. So it could have been one of those. But even so, I think that they're like so strategic in how they do uh, market a film or where they send it to festival wise mm -hmm. or, or what like awards they try to get into. It's like maybe maybe they that just wasn't the plan for this. And they were just like, it's going to be a commercial film. Yeah. Which is interesting in itself. It feels like like I'm kind of having like Spring Breakers flashback. Mm. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? It's like really against type casting big like fun names like kind of a yeah I don't know it just feels like there's like a parallel between those two movies in some way yeah, yeah. like not like themes or anything but I just there's something about it that feels kind of strange which was their breakout movie mm. so. mm. yeah which I actually only watched recently and what did you think so good I loved it so much right. James Franco's in it as well mm -hmm. right yeah I, I know the one spring break <laughs> <laughs> He plays the, the I'm like thinking gangster of wrong guy. guy. No. <laughs> Sprang Bray. No, I'm Palm Springs. I'm oh no, that's oh, a different film. Different film. That's Aubrey Plaza. Yeah. Is it? No, it's not. No. <laughs> Wait, A24 did a Spring Breakers? No, yeah, with um, yeah. Selena Gomez? Selena no. Gomez is yeah. in it. Vanessa Hudgens. Oh my that's God, it. maybe yeah. that's also the parallel. Vanessa Hudgens and Zac Efron. <gasps> they just need to get Ashley Tisdale. Oh, damn. Oh no! I was in thinking a wrong film. thriller about a female hit bodyguard. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to do it against type. <laughs> um, when I when I went onto Zac Efron on IMDb, I felt really sad for him because it said known for seventeen again. Like you know when it says what that. That's a good film. It's it a, a good, good film, movie. but I'm One like he's done so much more since that. I feel yeah. like that's so. Mean. But or maybe that's because I've just looked up 17 again before. <laughs> no, I feel on. like, y yeah. <laughs> Story checks out, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> I'm yeah. excited to see now what he gets, um, what he gets after this. Yeah. Yes. We got to put him in something. Yeah. So, 
Um, can I get a guess on the budget, please? I'm going to say 15. No, I'm going to say 15 or 20. I'm going to say 15 then. I am going to say nine. Fifteen point nine million. <laughs> <laughs> we <Wow>. knew. <laughs> um, yeah, and fifteen point nine. Yeah, on the opening weekend it got four. Well, nearly five million, mm. um, and then now, but it is still in cinemas whilst we're recording this. But now, gr- gross worldwide is forty million. So. Right. Doing great. They'll all work again. Yeah, they will. Um, I mean, speaking of Zac Efron next, <gasps> which did just asked before. Um, so he is gonna be in a celebrity thriller uh called Famous, made with Black Bear, who we love, um, and from director Jody Hill. Mm. Who's Black Bear, please? Black Bear is a great production company. Who yeah. will, who also produced Nyad that we're doing in a few oh, there we go. time great. and some other great things. Um, and I couldn't find, I couldn't find what all of the actors are doing next, but Harris Dickinson will be in the new Steve McQueen film, uh, yeah. Blitz. Amazing. Yeah, really okay, cool. great. Yeah. Um, okay. I've got some really quick little letterbox reviews that I wanted to share. Oh, please. Um, Kenzie Vanu- Vanuna said, this is Little Women, but for boys. <laughs> little boys, <laughs> little boys, <laughs> little boys. <laughs> and then a kind of similar one. Tyler says this is basically the Virgin Suicides, but for boys. Oh. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> Hyduck said this is the feel bad movie of the year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to use that from now on. Yeah. <laughs> feel scared movie of the year. <laughs> um, Dylan Troiskin said when your family curse is just the mere existence of your father. Ooh. Ouch. Um, real, Ouch. real at me next time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Regal said, practicing the iron claw on my popcorn. <laughs> Good. Great. For free. These people are so funny. Uh, um, but yeah, so what were your final thoughts, gals? I'm really glad to have spoken about it more with you. And I, f- I feel like the hesitations that I had are not a reflection of the movie and more a reflection of like my own agenda of what I need in order to like get get into a story um, when I can't just like seamlessly see myself as like the leading character. (laughs) 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 Because at the end of the day, I am a narcissist. So (laughs) Um, yeah, but I I really appreciate hearing, yeah, hearing your guys' thoughts. And I actually like really want to watch it again now, um, which I hadn't felt before. Mm, Yeah. Yeah, I'm... I also will be watching this one again, definitely. Um, And uh, it's also just made me want to rewatch The Wrestler, uh, Darren Aronofsky. It it just, if you are missing like an emotional pull, like if you watch a wrestler like that will get you. I just, I love seeing this antithesis between like a masculine, toxic masculinity and like what is behind that and just secretly really want all the boys in my life, men in my life to cry in front of me at least once just so I can like see them as real um, emotional human beings that I see all of my female friends as as well. Um, But that's a personal goal. (laughs) Um, (laughs) 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 Um, But I, yeah, I, I love this and I'm, I am so excited to see what Zac Efron does now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I like agree with both of you because I, yeah, didn't absolutely love it. But now that I've spoken about, but I wanted to, and I didn't. I definitely didn't hate it, and I still don't. Um, yeah. But also because maybe it wasn't made for us, and because like we haven't experienced toxic masculinity in our life. Well, uh, yeah. No, I, I haven't. I don't really know that no. we can experience that. Yeah. Um. So maybe it's that it wasn't for us to, it's okay that we didn't feel that because I've seen some amazing reviews of this and I think a lot of people do really love it. So, because I've been really trying to understand why, why didn't it have that effect on me? Yeah. It's Mm. just maybe something that like nuanced relationship with the dad that doesn't have to be overtly like a negative one. Like for a lot of men is just like so relatable mm. and they just feel, or yeah, people who have seen that like sort of toxic masculinity. If only one know. of us was male, then we could say, you know, if that, those things do hit home. Yeah. I, th- I think 
for me, watching films like this, like we've spoken a few times about The Wrestler and how much I love that film. Um, and it's, th that is what I find emotional about something like this because you don't see um, this much emotion in male films, sports films, you know, that are, um, it's all bravado, especially wrestling. They're all like speaking to the mic and I'm a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then to like see this behind the scenes of what's going on, that for me is what really hits it, even though I don't um, relate to it necessarily. Just think about the men that I know in my life who might be overtly stoic and uh, uh, everybody has like so much going on mm. and this breadth of emotion that they won't let out. Tragic. I like, I like sad. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. For the chats. Thanks so much for listening. Um, follow us for more on TikTok and Instagram. We are at Frank Film Club. Um, you can also email us on filmclub at rap.world if you want to send in your thoughts. We love to hear your thoughts. Um, on YouTube, please can you like and subscribe because it really helps us. And follow us on wherever you get your spot. Your podcast. Your podcast. This is a podcast. This is a podcast. <laughs>